Money and wealth are things we don't talk about much in Asian culture. So let's get personal about how Asian Americans feel about money, wealth, and finances. Whenever I think about Lunar New Year specifically, I do go back to like just growing up in my childhood home and thinking about how my mom would be like very much floating around the house, trying to tidy up the entire house, mm -hmm. yet just always having a smile on her face and playing the Chinese New Year music. It's always like the gong shi gong shi gong shi, and you can like hear it outside of our home because it's just played so so loudly. Um, and we would have tangerines and green onions all around the house. There's a lot of like gold candies and red candies, and it was just a very joyous time. I think had a bit of a more of like a struggle with uh, just how much to assimilate to like American culture mm -hmm. versus preserving like the past. I think just because when she came over and coming to America, I think like I think she felt like, oh, we shouldn't do too much. Or she, I think she was trying to like make us more accustomed to like the West also. So mm -hmm. it wasn't as intense mm -hmm. as what she went through. So for us, I think it was just like a meal. Um, so it's just uh, like like many things in Asian yeah. holidays and community and culture. It's like all just surrounded by the dinner and everything. So that's kind of what I remember the most. Just like what we ate, like the um, like the noodles and the fish and the the um, egg dumplings, things like that. Yeah. But egg we didn't. Dumplings. We, yeah, we didn't do. Oh, mom made egg dumplings. Yeah, we didn't do as much of like the decorating and stuff though. Yeah. Oh yeah, we went all out in yeah. the decorating. Yeah, and so now that's what she's kind of bringing into our home. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I, I, it's nice because I didn't have that as much growing up. So she's insisting that we do that and preserving that which is great that's really great and like when it comes to celebrating and honoring your culture's traditions like is it like a discussion like how do you decide like how much of that to introduce to your your son and, and this new family and home that you've built i think it's kind of great just because we have similar backgrounds so there's not really that much of a discussion it's just like of course we want to do this of course we want to preserve as much as we can especially you know being here in america um and you know, wanting to him to, you know, know about and, you know, definitely as he as he gets older and, you know, wanting to have wanting him to have like pride in where he comes from and his heritage. Yeah, I think for me growing up, I didn't really value any of these traditions as, as much as I do now. Because it was so normal, like you didn't yeah, realize so, how special. Yeah, it was. and if anything, it, was, it felt almost like a bit of an annoyance where I'd be mm. like, Mom, I have to wear these new shoes and pretend to stomp out the, all the bad people in my life. Or, you know, I have to wear red underwear. Like, why does it matter? <laughs> no one's going to see my underwear. No one's anyway. going to see my underwear. But I think now I'm like, we got to fill up. Are you wearing your maroon <laughs> underwear? <laughs> um, but... For me, it's it's important that we do carry on these traditions, especially as we are becoming sort of the next generation in America. I think it's very easy to lose sight mm -hmm. of your past and your history and your culture. Um, and it, it takes us to really make sure that we're intentionally sharing that with our kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, gifting red envelopes and receiving red envelopes is a big part of, you know, maybe not the part of, but like a big part of, you know, like Lunar New Year. Yeah, it's and a like, huge it's, part. It's yeah, a okay, huge fine. Part. I was trying to yeah. downplay, but yeah, show me the money. No, yeah. Yeah. So we actually started giving red envelopes last year okay. to our friends. My mom to your was, friends. Yeah. So my mom was here last year and she was the one that told me, she was like, oh, your friends are coming over. You have to give them like at least $10 in each of the red envelopes. Oh, remember, we gave $10 We them? did. How many Jeez. friends did and you have? We had maybe like five friends over. We're like, we're oh, down 50, 50 now. Dollars. <laughs> oh my God. I hope yeah. it was a potluck. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 They appreciated it. Um, yeah. But it is, it does feel like growing up, you know, it was always, we're receiving red envelopes yeah. and you never really had to think about Oh my gosh, like you had to go to the bank to get cash out. Like yeah. We live in a cashless system nowadays. I never have cash on me. So yeah. now this year, we're going to have to go to the bank, get cash out, get red envelopes. And you also have to think about, you know, which type of red envelopes you want. Do you want the, you know, the, the just like a, a cheap, nice one? Or do you want one with like beautiful like sayings on it or whatever? You know, it, it's, um, it's a process. And I appreciate all the aunts and uncles that <laughs> always had a stash of red envelopes in their bag, just yeah. ready to give out to Where all the kids. Because we're going to be, you know, those aunts and uncles now. Yeah, I, I remember as a kid, I think, you know, I didn't get an allowance. I feel like that's like not like a normal thing among Asian kids, no. like getting an allowance, right? So <laughs> my only times to collect anything to save up for any type of cash was, yeah. was birthday, I think sometimes Christmas, Christmas. and then, and then uh, but Lunar New Year was like in some ways more than a birthday because I oh, think yeah. a lot of times you would see more family during Lunar New Year. So I remember I had this like yellow, 
like box, like pencil box. I just put all the red envelopes in and just throughout the year, I would just like, or I threw, on that day, I would just collect them all there. And that would be my cash for the entire year. Basically. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And just like, you know, hold on to it. For more stories for and by the next generation of the Asian diaspora, visit coldteacollective.com. And thanks to our partners at US Bank for helping us bring these stories to life. Because every generation deserves an opportunity to achieve their dreams.